Let's begin. <laughs> hey there, scary story fanatics. Welcome back to Cleaving Thought from Bone with your host, Sociopathic. Are you ready for a devilish good time? Wonder what those noises are in the woods? Well, don't wander too deeply, or something sinister may follow you out. If you're salivating at the jaws for a true story, then lock those doors and get close to the glow of your monitor screens and experience the tale of misfortune that Doughboy420 likes to call West of the Barrens. When I was a teenager, my mother and I lived in a mobile home in a trailer park at the edge of a little town in eastern Pennsylvania. She had lived there once before with my grandma and grandpa when she was a kid, and now she lived there with me. The park we lived in was called Harmony Village, named after the creek that ran beside it and bore the same name. Harmony Village Trailer Park was nestled between a major road and the creek, and beyond the creek was forests. The park's roads were in the shape of a figure eight that was broken at one of the four connections in the middle. At one side was mostly trailers, while the other was mostly woods and overgrown brush, with trailers and apartment buildings near the center. I had several friends growing up in that park, and I also have several stories to tell from that time. This is one of them. My mother had worked part-time as a bartender in the next town over for a few years, and she usually got home very late, since the bars had to close at 2 a.m. I think this was one of the late nights where she had to close up, so she was home a little later than usual. While she was locking up the car, I was at home, up late on my computer, as I usually was on the weekend at that time. I was probably 16 at the time. I couldn't stay up that late on weekdays. I was still in school, but that didn't really stop me. Anyway, my mom had locked up the King of Hearts bar, where she had just worked a late shift, and was happy to be on her way home. She got into the car and drove home as she normally would. The road that went past the bar was the same road that Harmony Village was settled beside, and it was only a few miles away, so it was a quick and easy drive home. It normally only took her a few minutes to get home, but this night was different. My mom didn't arrive home much later than usual but it was how she acted when she got home that was different. I heard the front door open and then close, so I figured she was home and I got up to go out and greet her. I walked across my room and opened my door and peered down the hall. I saw my mother sitting there on the floor, leaned against the front door. I thought she was hurt, so I rushed down the hallway and kneeled down by her. She had a confused look on her face, and she was pale, like she had seen a ghost. But it was not a ghost. Are you okay? I asked her. She didn't answer. Ma, are you okay? I asked again. She turned and looked at me. Yeah, um, I'm all right. She answered in a tone that sounded like she was scared. Is something wrong? I asked. I... I seen something. She answered. What did you see? I asked. Never... Never mind. She said. Forget I said anything. She finished. She was stubborn, but so was I. No. What did you see? I insisted. I... 
I saw something over by Kenny's trailer, she answered. Kenny was my great uncle, my grandma's brother. He lived at the edge of the park, where it goes from trailers to brush and forest. What did you see? I asked further. I don't know what it was, she answered, still confused and trying to piece together what she had experienced. I don't want to tell you, she said. Why? I asked. Because you'll think I'm crazy, she answered. No, I won't. I promise. I assured her. Okay, she began. It looked like a kangaroo. Like, it had a kangaroo's body. Well, kind of. I don't know, she continued. It had legs like a kangaroo. And it had the head of a horse, she finished. She was obviously confused over what she had seen. What? I asked, also confused. I seen a kangaroo horse, she said, almost in tears, realizing how crazy it must have sounded. Okay, I'm going to go check it out, I said, being young and dumb. No, she yelled. Stay here. Stay inside. Don't go outside, she continued. Okay, I said. I won't go outside, I promise. I finished, but I was crossing my fingers. My mom calmed down after a while, and she retreated to her room to get ready for bed. I also returned to my room to get ready for bed. We said our I love yous and good nights and headed off to bed, but I wasn't tired. I was wide awake, wondering what it was that my mom could have seen. I waited for a while, until I was sure that my mom had gone to sleep. Then. I slipped on my shoes, threw on my hoodie, and out my window I went. The tongue of the trailer, where you would hitch the trailer to a truck, was outside my window, giving me easy access to the road that was also right outside my window. I walked out the front of my trailer and down the road, intending to walk around the unbroken side of the figure eight of the park the part that went into the woods and curled back around to the apartments. But first, I was going to walk around the other side, the side with the trailers. I walked down the dirt road and around towards my uncle's trailer. It was only about four or five trailers away from mine. I passed a few mobile homes and seen my uncle's ahead of me. I could see the street light that shined down on my uncle's trailer. He was always pissed off about it because he had to pay for the electricity to run it, but didn't want to pay to have it removed. I approached it and then walked past it. I walked beside the overgrown weeds and woods beyond my uncle's trailer. I kept walking towards Warren's house on the hill by the main road. Warren was the owner of the park. I could see the light from his windows in the distance. Then I slowed down. Then I stopped. I could see something in the tall weeds that grew beyond my uncle's trailer. I could see the reflection of eyes. Blood red, glowing eyes. Reflecting the light from the street light near my uncle's place. A feeling of dread came over me as I was frozen in terror the eyes staring at me, never blinking. Then it stepped out of the forestry and into the road ahead of me. There, I could clearly see it in the light. It started as a shadow in the weeds and then stepped into the light and my eyes adjusted and locked onto it. Hooved feet led up to knees that bent backwards before curving back up around to strong, muscular-like kangaroo legs. At its behind was a long, whip-like tail. I could see the wings sprouting from its back and tuck themselves tightly. I 
against its body. The creature's arms were short and tucked in close to its body in a position similar to a praying mantis, its arms curling upwards before its hands curving back down to end at clawed fingertips. The beast had a forward lurching body, and its neck ran up to an elongated face, a pale face with a long snout, like a horse, and a nose that curled upward from its face. Its eyes were a crimson hue and were a huge contrast against its pale skin. From its head, there were horns that tucked close to it and curved backward up over its pointed ears. Sure enough, the thing looked like a kangaroo horse, albeit a demonic one. No wonder my mom was so scared, I thought, still frozen in fear myself as I'm sure she must have been. It was at that moment that the beast took a step forward and began approaching me. Survival instincts quickly kicked in and I turned and ran. I ran as fast as I could back toward my house. I didn't even think to try my uncle's trailer. I was so scared that I wasn't thinking clearly at all. I felt nearly weightless as I ran, one foot leaving the ground before the other could even land. I was running as fast as possible. I was terrified. I could hear the monster's footsteps behind me. They pounded against the ground. I ran off the dirt road and through my yard. I was nearly home. The sound of the beast's footsteps stopped and for a moment, I could only hear the sound of my heart pounding in my chest as time seemed to slow down. Then, I heard a whoosh sound as the creature flew over top of me. I nearly fell down on the ground in fright of how close it was over me. It seemed mere inches above my head. Then I looked up and watched it fly up and land upon the roof of my trailer in front of me. It glared at me and flew down at me. Again, I felt the wind from its wings as the thing flew over me. I fell to the ground as the beast flew over me, but I quickly jumped up to my feet and ran to my deck. Up the stairs I went and flung the door open and jumped inside to the safety of my house. Then, after I shut and locked the door, I could hear the monster on my roof, walking across the metal roof of my trailer, its heavy footsteps making crunching sounds as it stepped across my roof. I hunkered down in fear of the beast bursting through my ceiling and killing me. I stayed there for a long time, listening to that creature walking slowly back and forth across my roof. I then remembered the open window in my room, so I quickly jumped to my feet and ran down the hallway to my right. I jumped across my bed and pushed the window down quickly before shutting off the light. I sat there for what seemed like hours, but it was only minutes, just watching my window, waiting for the thing to burst through the glass. I also feared the thing falling through my ceiling. I was terrified. I didn't know what to do. I didn't even realize that the thing had stopped moving across my roof. It had been silent for a while now. Maybe it's gone, I thought. I got up and left the room. I no longer heard anything as I walked down the hallway and through the living room and through the kitchen. I opened the door and checked on my mom to find her asleep. She had slept through the whole ordeal. All was fine and the creature had left us. Sleep was a luxury I couldn't afford that night. I was too scared to keep my eyes closed for more than a few minutes. I later did some research and found out about a thing called the Jersey Devil. It has a lot of descriptions that are similar to what we saw, and though it is commonly known to reside in the Pine Barrens that stretch across the state of New Jersey, it has been seen as far west as the center of Pennsylvania, New Jersey's neighboring state. So, if you happen to see a pair of glowing red eyes in the black, or see a jockey riding some kind of bat horse, don't place your bets on survival, no matter how fast you can run. And if your 
famished for more gruesome tales from my sociopathic mind, make sure to drop in for a feast next weekend. And until then, remember to like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so I can catch you all again next Saturday. <laughs> <laughs>